This program is brought to you by the partners of A Root Awakening International. Help others find truth. Support A Root Awakening International today. Most people are already aware that child trafficking is a huge problem. Yet 90% of funding to help the situation is spent on awareness. Only 10% is spent on rescue, and that leaves nothing for restoration. This week, Bear Independent explains what Yehovah instructed him to do about it and how you can help him do it. Because it's the end of the sixth day, the sun is set, and this is Shabbat Night Live. Well, Shabbat Shalom Torah fans, welcome to Shabbat Night Live with Michael Rood. It's a problem that everyone knows about. We even go and see movies about it, but we have a hard time knowing what we as individuals can actually do about it. Well, tonight, the change is coming. It's episode three of Grin and Barrett with Bear Independent, who is going to explain to us what he is doing about child trafficking and how you can help him get restoration for these kids, which is the missing piece of the puzzle. Before we get to that, let's get to the astronomically and agriculturally corrected biblical Hebrew calendar. There you see it on your screen. It is the third Shabbat in the month of Adar. Let's talk about that calendar with the guy who made it. Please welcome Michael Rood. Oh, thank you, Scott. Yes, sir, welcome. It was uh, over 20 years ago. I remember it like it was yesterday uh, that I am, I was at my home in Jerusalem and I invited Dr. Nehemiah Gordon to come over to the house and I explained uh, Matthew 23 where it says, the scribes and Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Whatever they say, do, but do not, yeah. That's what it says, whatever they say. And I said to Nehemiah, there is no way that Yeshua could have said that. It's not true. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, why do you think so? And so I spent the next three hours going through the Gospels and showing how Yeshua is always vehemently violating the rules of the Pharisees. And he said, at first, it was my problem because Yeshua said that and he was laughing about it. And uh, then he said, but it's really uh, what I've been trained in because this is an apparent contradiction in an ancient text. That's what I am schooled in. And so uh, he, he looked at the Hebrew Matthew he, uh, uh, and, and uh, it says, whatever they say, do. Uh, no, I mean, whatever he says, do that. Mm. Moses, not the Pharisees. Yes, it was a, it was a Yomer Yamru con contradiction. The, the text said, whatever he says, but uh, the, the guy who translated it put it in brackets, whatever they say. Oh, is that where that came from? That's in the Hebrew Matthew. Okay. Yeah, because it agrees with the Greek. Okay. But, but the Hebrew is very plainly do what he says because it is a difference with, with one letter. One letter is all the, the difference there is. And so it says whatever he says, do, but do not follow the Takanot and Maasim of the Pharisees. In the last act of the Sanhedrin, in 359 of the Kahneman era, was to change the calendar by making a takanot, by making a rule that changes biblical law, and by a maase, which is an act of the rabbis which serves as a legal precedent. And so, so it says, don't follow the rules of, of the Pharisees. Don't follow their takanot and their maasim. And so I set out years ago, this is over, over 20 years ago, I set out 
to obey what Yeshua actually said. He said, don't follow the doctrine of the Pharisees. And then their, their last talking out and Maasim was to make a new calendar that uh, negates the original calendar. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we produce the, the astronomically and agriculturally corrected biblical Hebrew calendar because this is a calendar that was in use when Yeshua was here. Mm. And that makes a lot more sense, you know, like it, rather than calculating when these things are going to happen. I mean, that's what the Pharisees did, right? That was the last yeah, act of the Sanhedrin. Yeah. yeah, they changed it all. And so you couldn't, you couldn't uh, know when Shavuot was. You couldn't know when the crucifixion happened. Mm. You couldn't figure out anything because they changed the calendar. Mm. But that calendar was not in place a year before 359. In 358, it didn't exist. And so they changed it to, and they confused things. And Yeshua said, don't follow their talking on Basim. Don't follow them. And that makes a lot of sense because when, you know, Yehovah wants us to depend on him. So, you know, it would, it would make sense that his calendar relies on us looking to the sky and seeing if we can see the moon. And if not, if it's a cloudy day, obviously Yehovah wanted us to wait till the next day, yeah. depend on him to the last minute, and then declare things. Don't try and do it ourselves, right? Yes, that's a good uh, clue uh, there, Scott, because every year we make two years of calendars, and it's very hard work to make two whole years every single year because we don't know when the Aviv is. Right. And so we make two calendars to cover everything because it's for those who want to do what Yeshua said to do. He said, don't follow their talking out. And so if you do, if you use a rabbinic calendar, you're just going by what the Pharisees made up. You're yep. not doing what Yeshua said to do. Right. And you'll never figure anything out. That's why I do the calendar every year. We do the calendar so that people have an opportunity to, be to believe and to do what Yeshua said to do. Right, and a lot of what uh, what uh, Yeshua said to do was take care of the widows and the orphans, and the orphans is orphans in a way is what we're talking about tonight. Uh, Bear is actually talking about child trafficking. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, uh, the, uh, the restoration. Yeah, the restoration of that is the important part because yeah, everybody knows about it, and then we can rescue the kids. But then what? So, uh, Bear is talking about that tonight. So here, here, take a look. This is what he's going to say. Because this is ultimately a failure of leadership in the home, leadership in the church, and leadership in governance. We have abdicated the throne of responsibility in all three facets there, to where we've made children an afterthought, a byproduct, to where they are literally sold as product today. One of the most disgusting quotes that I've ever heard comes from a member of the Sinaloa cartel who said, children are the new heroin because I can sell a bag of heroin one time, but I can sell a five-year-old 10 times a day for 10 years before they're used up. The average lifespan of somebody who's being trafficked is seven years. Hmm. If you begin to be trafficked at, at four, you're statistically dead by 11. 12, dead by 19. 14, dead by 21. And so we knew we, we gotta do something about this. All right, so there you go. Michael, thank you for joining us tonight and giving us that uh, insight on the calendar and why it exists and why it needs to exist. Appreciate you being here. Oh, thanks, Scott. All right, so 90% of funding to help the child trafficking situation is spent on awareness. Only 10% is spent on rescue, and that leaves nothing for restoration, as Michael was just saying. This week, Bear Independent explains why Yehovah instructed him to do something about it and how you can help him do it. So get your bread and wine, and we'll meet you back here and with Michael for the Kiddush in two minutes. <laughs> What does it mean to be a man? Is it what the world says? If that's true, why are there so many broken lives, broken homes, and broken spirits when men do things the world's way? So many men will say yes when it's convenient, 
And then when it's time to cash in that, yes, oh, it's too difficult, my wife's unhappy, I got a thing going on. No, you said you would be there. In this month's Love Gift Teaching, Biblical Manhood, survivalist teacher, firearms expert, emergency response instructor, entrepreneur, and servant of the Most High, Bear Independent, reestablishes the simple biblical model of what Yehovah expects of men in every aspect of their lives. This teaching is not available anywhere online, but we'll give it to you as our thanks for supporting A Rude Awakening International. When you donate $50 as a love gift to this ministry in March, we'll send you Biblical Manhood with Bear Independent on DVD or Blu-ray. Donate $100 and we'll send you Biblical Manhood plus a 40-ounce stainless steel insulated tumbler with encouraging verses from the Bible plus a matching prayer journal. Donate $300 and we'll send you Biblical Manhood, the matching stainless steel tumbler and prayer journal, and a limited edition clay plaque hand-painted in Israel featuring pomegranate artwork and 24 karat gold accents. These gifts are a limited time offer from Michael Rood to thank you for your support. Make your donation today and receive the $50 gift, the $100 gift, or the $300 gift. Thank you. Your donations ensure that important teachings like biblical manhood keep coming from A Rude Awakening International. Use your smartphone to scan the QR code on your screen to donate now and receive these limited time gifts. Or call 888-766-3610 or get your gifts online with a donation at monthlylovegift.com. When Yeshua fed the 5,000 with leavened barley loaves in the Galilee, the Pharisees came down on him because they accused him that he and his disciples did not wash their hands before they ate bread. They did not wash their hands with a negel vesser and say this prayer, blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who sanctified us by your commandments, commanding us concerning the washing of hands. Why didn't Yeshua do that? Why didn't his disciples follow that? Because it is takanot. It is a law which they invented, and Moses said no one is ever allowed to add to or subtract from. But the night of the Last Supper, Yeshua took bread, and he put in place a rehearsal that was really put in place by the Kohen Gadol, the high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Melchizedek himself brought forth bread and wine to Abraham, and Yeshua interpreted that very thing. Baruch atah Yehovah Eloheinu melech ha'olam, hamotzi lechem miharetz. This is what Yeshua put in place, that before we eat bread, that we say this prayer, and as often as we do this, we do it in remembrance of him, because his broken body was broken for us, and by his stripes we were healed. So as often as we do this, as often we do it in remembrance of him. And Yeshua took the cup, and he said, Baruch atah Yehovah Eloheinu melech Array pre Hagafen. The creator of the fruit of the vine, Yehovah, created the fruit of the vine. He said, This represents the renewed covenant in my blood. As often as you do this, do this. Remember me. And remember, I will be drinking this with you at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Shabbat Shalom. When was the last time you went to Walmart? In Walmart, they had this thing up on the wall of all these missing kids from your neighborhood, from other neighborhoods. And then it's not, well, these are just kids that ran away. No, the ugly answer is they probably were trafficked. They're probably trapped in something and hopefully they're still alive. So we don't like to think about that. And we've seen movies about this type of thing, but then the problem becomes, well, what can I do about this? 
Well, one guy asked himself that question and he did something about it and uh, he needs your help too. So please welcome back to the program, TJ. TJ, welcome back. Slow Better known as Bear Independent, Bear from the yes, internet. Sir. So tell us, uh, well, first of all, what, so human trafficking, this is what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. How did you decide that, hey, this is my fight? I didn't. I did not make a conscious decision to get into this line of work. I hate this line of work. I hate that it exists. I hate that I have to be involved in it at all. I hate that these things occur. But it's not my will be done, it's y'all's will be done. And three and a half years ago, Grindstone Ministries, which is our first 501c3, which is a construction and disaster relief ministry, was contacted by an outfit called Bethany House. Bethany being the town that Lazarus lived in, right? The, the resurrection, the rebirth of life. And Bethany House um, is a restoration facility for kids that have been trafficked. And they were, they were having some problems with the infrastructure at their facility. Hearts in the right place, but like everything just kept breaking. And so they reached out to us and they said, um, hey, in one of our buildings, the floors on one side of one of our buildings are spongy, maybe they're rotting out. Can you come take a look and give us a hand? Yup. And talk about scope creep, man. We had our hands on everything at that facility. Dozens of buildings. Uh, I mean, it just, one thing after the- Mushroom. Have about. you ever renovated an old house? Oh, yeah, that's another thing I don't want to think about. Yes, I had two. One in my house, and I bought the house next door as a rental, and both of them are built in 1948. So when you open the wall, we're just going to do this thing. And then you open the wall, <laughs> and you see, instead of Romex, I've got knob and tube electrical from <laughs> yes. the 1950s. And I've got copper pipes or ductile iron pipes that are rusting out. And this, oh, and the foundation is bending. Yeah, yeah. and the sill plates are all termite <laughs> eaten, and it's just junk, right? And yeah. so the, this $300 job that you were going to do is now an $18,000 job on this wall. That was Bethany House for us. And it was beautiful because Grindstone is all volunteer and it's all privately funded. The father is so good. Everybody we needed, we got. Everything we needed, we got. People stepped up to donate materials and labor and time and expertise and heavy equipment and it was gorgeous. And so we were blessed to work on like every structure on that property. And Toward the very end of that, I was walking out of the building that we were living in. They were housing us on property. And I was walking out of that building over to, they, they have a mess hall, a chow hall. It's set up like a 1950s diner, it's pretty cool. It was a beautiful day. Um, crisp air, blue sky, fluffy clouds. And I was just looking up at the sky, talking to Yah. And I was like, this is so good. You're so good. This is so good. Like a thousand pounds conviction just dropped on me. You need to build more of these. What? You need to build more of these. I don't know how to do that. I didn't sign up for this. Did I stutter? No, sir, you did not stutter. We will build more of these. <sighs> Dude, let your yes be yes and your no be no. Life and death is in the power of the tongue. So be careful what you let come out of your mouth, especially when you're speaking to the creator of the universe. So I went home, we finished up, I went home, I prayed over that, started talking to people on my team what does that look like? What are we gonna do? You see, in the United States of America, 90% per annum per year of the money that is raised for anti-human trafficking is raised for awareness. I don't need to be made any more aware of the fact that the problem exists. Apparently a lot of people do. And I try not to let my flesh get in the way and for me to get pissed off and resentful that we're spending 90% of 
of the money that's raised on awareness. Because awareness doesn't fix any problems. It's 10% is spent on rescue. And rescue is good. But there's some downstream issues with rescue that we need to deal with. Go in here, rescue these kids, pull them out of the problem. Cool. Zero percent is spent on restoration. Hmm. Zero. So if we, if we look at this like a medical issue, you go to the doctor. Ninety percent of your doctor bill is like, yeah, brother Scott, you got an issue. Ten percent of it is your surgery, and zero percent of it is your long-term rehabilitation. Zero. You don't even get to talk to the doctor after that. <sighs> I've tried to not just be furious that this stuff happens in the first place. I believe firmly and we need to do. You will know them by their fruits. I will show you my faith by my works. Somebody wrote into us and they said, we need a statement of faith from your ministry. One word, the Hebrew letter yod, the outstretched hand, do stuff. First letter in Yah's name, first letter in Yeshua's name. Mm. It means works. Good point. Do works. And so we didn't know, we didn't know what we were gonna do or how we were gonna do it but I knew that I had told the father that I would do it. And this was, this was not a negotiation with him. This was a, I require this of you. That's a tough place to be in when you're made of flesh. When you don't wanna do this, you don't wanna confront this. You don't have the money to do it. You don't, you don't have the time, you don't, don't think you have the time. Don't, yeah, don't have the time, right? But, Forsake not the widow and the orphan. If you do, your wife will be a widow. Your children will be orphans. I believe that's in the book of Deuteronomy. And that just hit really hard. And so we started Caleb House, Caleb with the K, as a 501c3 not-for-profit. And I love Caleb. He's one of two of the original Israelites that make it into the promised land. Because he gave a good report, to Moshe. And in the book of Joshua, Joshua and Caleb are having a conversation as they're divvying up the land. And Caleb says to Joshua, you see that mountain up there? New Living Bear translation. You see that mountain up there? I want that mountain. You mean Kiriath Arba, Hebron? Bro, it's filled with giants. And Joshua says to Caleb, or I'm sorry, Caleb says to Joshua, I am as good today as I was the day that Moshe tapped us on the shoulder to go and inspire the promised land. That was 45 years before. And most people miss, especially in Christendom, become a believer and everything's gonna be easy. The father led Joshua into the promised land. In fact, he's, mess, he's met by the messenger of Elohim, capital M, on the road in and uh, this, Archangel, arguably Yeshua, Joshua says to him, are you for us or are you for them? And the angel responds, you're for me, homie. And Joshua falls down and does obeisance. That's how you know it's the divine. Otherwise, angels are like, dude, get up. We're just like you. Stop worshiping us. Not in that situation. And so Caleb goes up this mountain, Hebron, and slaughters three giants in the promised land. Hebron, a long biblical story. Top of that mountain is where you'll find the threshing floor that King David buys to build the first temple. And so Caleb is a biblical badass that was unafraid of giants in the promised land. That resonated with me deeply. So we started Caleb House and um, we didn't know what we were gonna do other than we've gotta build another restoration facility because we've gotta break the generational curse that's happening here with these kids. It's a learned behavior. Each sexual predator, because that's what we're dealing with here, 
is pedophiles and the after effects of their pedophilia. Each one of them is statistically responsible for 82 victims. Not offenses, victims. If you divide the number of offenses by the number of perpetrators, it's 82 per. That is a learned behavior. At some point, unfortunately, the victimizer was the victim. And they grew up with that trauma, and then they, they, they act out, and then they do that to somebody else. Then that person grows up traumatized and goes from victim to victimizer, and the cycle continues again and again and again. And so there's two ways that that has to be combated in my experience, in my opinion. The first is, and there's a demarcation, a line of delineation at the age of responsibility, the age of accountability. If you are a child, this is not your fault. And we need a place where we can bring you outside of the care of the state, outside of the um, uh, foster care system, where we can meet your every need, mental, physical, emotional, educational, spiritual, financial, in a safe place where nobody's ever gonna hurt you again. And our program is not six months or a year long, because I'm not gonna tell a four-year-old they got a year to get their life together before we kick them out again. We have in our care right now children ages 1 to 19. 1. 1 to 19. The flip side, the other side of that age of accountability, victim on the one side, victimizer on the other. We partner with local, state, and national law enforcement to develop undeniable intelligence that allows for the conviction and imprisonment of those people. Means, methods, TTPs as to how we do that are outside the scope of this conversation, but we have been blessed to have been partnered with and trained with the best of the best in the industry that your taxpayer dollars trained up on this stuff to learn how to do that so that it is undeniable, documented fact that this person did this and they will never see the light of day again. Now, if we lived in biblical times, the Torah tells me that I get to hit that person in the head with a rock. And the flesh part of me wants that so bad. And it is very challenging to look at that person and know, to know beyond a shadow of a doubt. In the mouths of two or three, let a thing be established. Well, if I got nine witnesses per the Torah you're convicted. Call me a Sanhedrin, you're a dead man. That's not my job. That is not what y'all told me to do. And so the men with badges and guns, we empower the men with badges and guns to have undeniable intelligence that allows them to get convictions on those people so that they never hurt anybody again. On the restoration side, building Caleb House, we set out, we bought a piece of land, we started dirt work, praise y'all, all privately funded. Ones and fives and tens and twenties that have all come in from people all around the country and the world that wanna support what we're doing because this is ultimately a failure of leadership in the home, leadership in the church, and leadership in governance. We have abdicated the throne of responsibility in all three facets there to where we've made children an afterthought, a byproduct, to where they are literally sold as product today. One of the most disgusting quotes that I've ever heard comes from a member of the Sinaloa cartel who said, children are the new heroin because I can sell a bag of heroin one time, but I can sell a five-year-old 10 times a day for 10 years before they're used up. The average lifespan of somebody who's being trafficked is seven years. If you begin to be trafficked that's at four, you're statistically dead by 11. 12, dead by 19. 14, dead by 21. And so we knew we, we gotta do something about this. How can I impact those statistics directly? One is with as much conviction and as much time sentencing as possible for the victimizers. And the other is on the victim side, I have to break this generational curse because if I don't, every one of these kids statistically will harm 82 more people. 
And so we set out to build Caleb House. We bought the land, we begun the dirt work. And in the process of not having a facility, we got a phone call. And uh, there was a brother who works inside of our organization. He called me up and said, T, I need an extraction right now. I said, where are you? It was hours and hours and hours away. So what do you need? I said, I need to be able to move X number of people out of this location now. All right, we're up. Made some phone calls, piled in some vehicles, and we went and we pulled those first nine people out that night. Now this is just on not an organization per se, just calling up people and the, helping. Somebody reached out to us I can't give you all the details because of legitimate operational security considerations. Somebody reached out to us and said, hey, uh, there are people in this situation. They are located here. There's a window of opportunity from now till this time. We need to go. So we went, we pulled nine people out, moved to a safe site, got blown at the safe site. That was fun. Plate carriers and rifles, you know, we're talking about preparedness, everybody wants a gun. I want all the guns when the bad guys show up. Um, and that's that's another thing, man. Operating in fear, we were talking about that. There are members of cartels today, if they knew I was sitting here right now, would be trying to shoot me in the forehead. Cool, I'm gonna shoot them in the forehead back. I'm gonna be better at it than they are. And again, we have lots of really interesting friends that I'm thankful to y'all for, which has also been awesome, because I've got these just units of meat eaters I'm like, cool, you think you're badass? Let me tell you about the coolest guy who ever walked the face of planet Earth. His name was Yeshua. He died for you. I have baptized more Navy SEALs than I can count. Mm -hmm. Praise Yah. Army Special Forces. Praise Yah. CIA, DIA, Civil Affairs, NSA, NRO. Praise Yah. And so that has become a ministry in of itself. It's awesome. But we get this phone call. It's like, hey, we gotta go. We need to get out now. Roger that, we're up. So we pull them out, go to a safe site, get blown, go to another safe site, lay up. And uh, we've done that dozens of times now. And we've established a network of safe sites without having yet built the restoration facility and we kind of got the cart before the horse on this one, but I'm not, I'm not the person that can sit by and say, hey, give me another year while I finish this facility. You just stay over there and get seriously raped every day. I'll be back in a, in a year and then we'll deal with this problem. No, we're gonna go get you out now. We'll deal with the rest of this later. I'll figure out where we're gonna put you, who's gonna watch you, who's responsible for it. I'll figure all that out, the back end victim services stuff white collar professionals. But we gotta solve the immediate problem immediately. And then we'll deal with the long-term problem as the Father allows. And he has blessed us immensely in that. Mm, beautiful, well we're gonna continue this story. We're not done here yet. So thank you for joining us. Thank you for joining us. And you're probably thinking in your head, well, is there a way that I can help with this? Yes, we're gonna give you information later on how you can uh, give to what TJ is doing here with Caleb House. And uh, so just stay tuned for that. Uh, in the meantime, I wanna thank you for even bringing him here because now other people can know about what is going on here. And I encourage you to pass this episode to as many people as possible because they need help. They need help to do what they need to do. And goodness knows this problem isn't going away, unfortunately. So uh, stay tuned for the second half. We'll talk more about that. Again, thank you for donating to this, uh, to this ministry. You've made this program happen. And by donating again, you can help to ensure that this goes to as many people as possible in the future. Thank you.
Thank you for donating to Shabbat Night Live. So were you aware of the child trafficking problem? Great, well there went 90% of the budget. <laughs> How about the 10% to get the kids out of there? Well, great, okay, we took them out. Uh, now what? Okay, so that's what we're talking about with Bear, better known as TJ. So you were describing before how Yah dropped it on you that, hey, we're gonna build more uh, facilities like this uh, Bethany house, mm -hmm. uh, but not there yet. In the meantime, hey, we need a rescue. <laughs> Cart before the horse. 100%. I'm sure you're running through your head, am I still supposed to do this? I mean, what? this wasn't the way this was supposed to go. Well, so a lot of people think because they encounter a, a few speed bumps on the road of life that, oh, this must not be Yah's will, it's not easy. Like, you, you probably listened to some false doctrine on Sunday morning coming from behind a pulpit. No, we conflate easy and good. Easy is cheap, man. Good is from Yah. Um, and so, yeah, it's not been easy at all. It's been incredibly good. Uh, we've established a network of safe sites and We've been blessed that the Bear Nation, our followers of Bear Independent, have just poured out. Um, it allowed us to buy land. We've begun dirt work and road construction, and we're going to begin um, the process of, you know, there's a, there's a biblical instruction for this. First, prepare your outside work and then build your house. And so we'll have the barn built uh, by January 1, uh, 2024. And then jumping off point from the barn, we'll be putting a barn dominium in there. That's for the caretaker, which I like to colloquially describe as the guy with the weed whacker and the AR-15. <laughs> um, and so we're building this facility that will be able to house, at Caleb House One, we'll be able to house 60 individual children using a care house model. And the care house model is something that we learned from our friends at Cooks and Hills. And essentially what that means is we build a house and then house parents live in this house. And the children that come into this house, those are their children. Mm. And they okay. shall raise them up in the way that they should go so they do not depart from it when they are older. Because again, I'm not telling a one-year-old or a four-year-old or an eight-year-old or hell, a 15-year-old, dude, you got a year to figure it out and then you're out on your own. That is not preservation of life. That is uh, fiscally efficient which we're in no way concerned about. This is your child. Raise them. You're not interested in being another uh, foster care not even a little organization. Bit. Not even a little bit. Now there are, there are good foster parents out there, but the foster care system is inherently broken. And what most people don't realize is that it depends on the, the reports that you read because the statistics vary, but somewhere between 70 and 80% of people who have been trafficked know the person who trafficked them. Hmm. It is, there are incidents where children are taken. Um, in North Texas, there was a Walmart that over 300 children were taken from in the bathroom. Because just like you and I might place an order for, I need more pens, somebody places an order for an eight-year-old boy that's got blue eyes and blonde hair. And they go into the bathroom alone, and then they're taken. Hmm. And so that does happen, but it is statistically not the bulk of the problem. The bulk of the problem is bad parents and bad foster parents who need money. And so they sell the children. And, and trafficking by definition means that there is an element of exploitation, whether it's sexual trafficking or uh, labor trafficking, it, there's an exploitation that's taking place there. A person has been exchanged in part or in whole for money. That's what happens. It's modern day slavery. And so in the foster care system, while there are good parents within the foster care system, they're the exception, not the rule. And the foster care system is just impregnated with government bureaucracy and it's, it's a bad system. If somebody has been trafficked once, there's a seven in, 10 tra seven in 10 chance that they will be trafficked again because traffickers look for the signs of these, these kids. They know that this person is uh, diminutive. They're not gonna cry out. They're not feisty. They don't fight back. They don't, they're a perfect target, especially if I know they've already been trafficked once. They're gonna be trafficked again and again and again and again. And so again, trying to break generational curses with Caleb House, we're using the care care house model with house parents. 
where when this child comes into this home, this is their home. You're their parents. Mazel tov. We're here. Whatever you need. Again, mentally, physically, emotionally, educationally, financially, spiritually. Whatever your needs are. Whatever that child's needs are. We have been absolutely blessed to partner with white collar professionals, trauma therapists, and nurses, and doctors, um, rehabilitation specialists. I mean, we've even had people in the permaculture community come out and say, we want to help you uh, scape the land so that you can have productive agriculture on property and, you know, vocational skills, from whether it's, you know, equine therapy or wood shop or, hey, go feed the chickens, whatever it might be. And so that type of environment that we're able to, we're in the process of building for these kiddos, um, then nobody's ever going to hurt them again. Hmm. And what's super cool, man, these kids, there's nobody better to minister to the next generation of kids that come in than these kids themselves. We did an extraction. There's another touch and go extraction. It was rough. And at one point, we're in a safe site and I'm standing outside with a plate carrier and a rifle because there, there'd be bad guys up in them hills, right? It was, it's rough. And I got three teenagers, boys and girls, sitting here looking at me and they're very quizzical. They're examining me head to toe. <laughs> so finally I said, what's up guys? What do you got? What's going on? And uh, the youngest was the mouthpiece for the, this gaggle of three. And they said, what do we have to do to do what you do? I said, what do you mean? They said, what career path do we have to follow to do what you do? Hmm. I'm like, I'm nobody. I'm just some guy from Eastern Oklahoma that y'all convicted to talk to a sideways iPhone. I have some really cool friends, but I'm nobody, right? I mean, we've got paramedics and EMTs and law enforcement and you know, dot .mil and dot .gov all wrapped up in this. I'm nobody. And I'm trying to figure out how to answer this question. I said, why do you want to know that? Because my brain goes to vocational. I'm like, if you want to be an EMT, I'll pay for you to go to EMT school, paramedic school, whatever. You want to be law enforcement? We'll pay for the academy, buy you all your gear, like whatever, whatever you want to do. And they said, no, we want to know how when we get through this thing, we go help others. Hmm. And then one of the other kids started to cry. I'm like, what's up? What's going on? And they were crying because they still had friends back where we'd taken them from. Hmm. It's like, and we need to get them out too. So how do we, how do we short circuit this process so that we can also be a part of what you're doing so we can go back and get my friends out. Slayed me. Hmm. Still slays me to this day thinking about it. And so, not only are we breaking these generational curses, restoring these, these children and giving them a biblical covering and raising them up in the way that they should go, we're also building a network of little warriors that are perfectly experienced to deal with this problem. And it's just been amazing to see the hand of Yah all over this, bringing people in as they're needed. And we have, we have always gotten what we needed when we needed it, who we needed when we needed it. And it's been just an, it's an absolute testimony of provision and protection and blessing, literally inexplicable. And there's like, in 2020, there were 420 DHS sanctioned beds in the entire United States. DHS is the agency that has oversight on human trafficking. 420. As of 2022, I believe that number's up to 780 beds in the entire country. Well, again, it depends on which reports you read, but there's anywhere between 12 and 27,000 children per month that go missing in the United States of America. Wow. And human trafficking, we don't have solid stats in the United States, but it's estimated globally that it's a $150 billion per year industry. For context, you could buy every Starbucks, every Target, every NBA franchise, 
and still have money left over every year for what human trafficking earns. And Americans are the number one offender on planet Earth. They're, we are the number one participator in this atrocity. Sex crimes, labor crimes, um, there's a sickness that nobody is addressing on the consumption side. And so, y'all told me build Caleb House. I'm like, dude, I'm an idiot. I don't know how to do any of this. You just build it, son. I got everybody that you need lined up. Just somebody has to take the first step. And to that, I would say to your audience, you know, we were talking about earlier conflating the difference between easy and good. Was it easy? Hell no, it's not easy. It sucks. It'll eat you up inside. But remember, the moment you start feeling sorry about yourself, what that kid, that one kid went through, who am I to complain? I'm blessed beyond measure. And I, I actually had to check myself because I would come home from doing some of these operations and I would be resentful to my children because they're complaining about stuff that doesn't matter. I've got a soon to be 17 year old daughter and she was complaining one day that she was out of a particular color of nail polish and I was just furious. And then the father, her biggest problem, is she's running out of nail polish Praise Yah, hmm. right? Bring it back around and go, I don't get to feel sorry for myself. Especially when these guys, who are, these kids that you've rescued are willing to get, get the training right now and dive uh, right back in. Send me back in, boss, I'm ready to play. And so uh, policing ourselves mentally, emotionally, spiritually is really important. Uh, but conflating easy and good, it's not easy. There's nothing about it that's easy. It's expensive, it's inefficient. Everybody loves to talk about it. Nobody wants to do it. There's no money for it. It takes an exorbitant amount of commitment, but it's the right thing to do. It is inherently good. And to that point, everybody who's listening, everybody within the sound of my voice, if the Father has called you to do something, has put you on a path, and has said, you will do this, you have two options. One is obedience, the other is disobedience. It's as simple as that. And delayed obedience is disobedience. I will do it when I get around to it. That is disobedience. He didn't convict you today to go do something a year from now when it's convenient for you. Because how, how many atrocities were committed in between now and when you decided to get around to it? Delayed obedience is disobedience. Hmm. And so if the Father puts you on a pathway and convicts you to move, you have his covering, you have his power and authority in the name of Yeshua. You have wisdom and discernment from the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Go execute, yod, do stuff. What are you so afraid of? Step boldly into your calling. Because this and all the other problems we're experiencing in this world is because we, we uh, men of faith, lack, we lack the commitment and the authority and the constitution to do what the Father requires of us. And again, I'm not special. And so many people try and put me up on a pedestal. Bear, that's so cool that you're doing that. I wish everybody was doing what the Father called them to do. How much better would this place be if everybody was walking in his will and executing on his authority and doing what they were fearfully and wonderfully created to do from the moment they were born, from before they were born, Yah knew every hair on their head. He didn't make you as an accident. He had a plan for you and you snub your nose in his face every time you don't step into what it is that he called you to do. Hmm. The world needs more men. The world needs more men of Elohim. We wouldn't have these damn problems if men would just step up. 
And it, it frustrates me in my flesh and my weakness that this is something that, woe is me, we gotta deal with this. Somebody does. Somebody had to lop the heads off of 450 false prophets of Baal. Hmm. Somebody had to pick up the jawbone of an ass and beat a thousand Philistines to death. You know, we, we hear it preached on Sunday mornings, the gifts of the Spirit. I can open this book and show you dozens of places that men of over Elohim were overcome by the Spirit and went and did incredibly dangerous things for the glory of Yah, for the preservation of life. And I think we're missing that as a society, and I think we're missing that as a faith and as a walk as well. I don't know, and it doesn't mean they don't exist, but I don't know of another Torah observant ministry that's out there doing stuff. I think we should have Sukkot tabernacles. That's wonderful. And we should do Pesach, and we should donate the word, and we, sh we should also go feed the hungry, man. Go to the soup kitchen, right? Where did Yeshua meet all these people he was saving? Was he in the temple on Shabbat preaching? Absolutely. Did he know every word on that Torah scroll? Yep, because he's the word made flesh. He was also pulling sinners out of ditches. And I think we're missing that as a, as a faith group, as a belief system. And I would just challenge specifically all the men out there. I can't speak to a woman. I've never been a woman. I never will be regardless of what society thinks. Not possible biologically. But to all the men within the sound of my voice, if the Father has put a calling on your heart, you had better be obedient to it. And if you're not, you're being willfully disobedient. And if you read this word, which you should be, every day you should have your nose in this Bible, look at all the places where the Father's people did not do what he told them to do. It never goes well for them. Hmm. If you wish to enter into life, guard the commands. So even if people say, well, I've got all these businesses that I'm doing and all this and. Um, cool, you're busy, got it. Right, That's but, cute. but they can be, but this kind of work also needs financiers. 100%. Right, so it, someone doesn't need to feel guilty that they've, that they've got another vocation, but they need to pray about where their, their, uh, their excess needs to go to, where I'd their be, tithe goes to, where their. We'd be dead in the water if it wasn't for good people donating. Right. That's a fact. Not everybody is called to do what we do, but everybody's called to do something. Right. And I can't tell you what that something is. That's between you and Yah. In fact, I tell people, if the Ruach doesn't move you to give to Caleb House, I don't want a dime of your money. I don't want to be participatory in anything that's against the conviction of the Spirit. So if the Spirit's not moving, cool, mazel tov. There's a thousand other organizations that need your help. Mm -hmm. Go help them because my God is God and I have power and authority in his name over this entire earth and everything that I need shall be given to me in his son's name for his glory if I just ask. And we have gotten everything we need and most of what we want anytime we've ever needed anything. And I think that's a good point that and I experienced that just in a weird way when I was coming to this country. Uh, I'm coming from Canada. It doesn't sound like we came from Canada. What, what's the big deal there? But we almost didn't get to stay here. But, but because I believed on his word and started praying differently, and our audience has probably heard this on other shows, I've said this, but instead of please God this and please God that, saying your word says this, I'm gonna stand on it, and I'm just gonna wait patiently for it. Mm -hmm. And when he sees that, he honors that, and he mm -hmm. brings everything you said. Uh, I have an exact saying like you do, exactly what you need, exactly when you need it. Yep. So if he's called you to do something, and, and like you said, you're not sure even how that's gonna happen, mm -hmm. is your message, just trust it will happen. He'll have all those pieces that you don't see yet, they mm -hmm. will come. It's not faith if he's already shown you how you're gonna get there. It's not faith. It requires zero trust of me to know exactly how this is gonna end up before I step off. That's not faith, that's convenience. Right. I, Dear Father, I need you to show me that it's gonna be perfectly okay before I move. <laughs> Negative, doesn't work. Yeah. Hey, go walk in a circle for 40 years. You guys messed up, a bunch of y'all need to die. I'll talk to you later. 
Yeah. Like, we're Israel, <laughs> murmuring, we're bad, you know, we're, everything the people in this book have done, we do as well, right? Amen. It's not faith if he's gonna tell us exactly how it's gonna end. Faith is knowing that he's got us every step of the way and leaning into that and knowing that he is a good father. He truly does love us. You know, who, if your son asked for an egg, would give him a rock? Come on, right? Like, hey dad, I need help. And to that point, and I'll, I'll end with this. When we pray, you're talking about reminding the father of standing on his word, right? It's Torah. In the mouths of two or three, let a thing be established. He knows you need what you need, but you have to confess it outward verbally because now we've got two witnesses. Mm. Now we can work together. Now this thing can be established. And so I'm a big fan of praying out loud. Even on the, the, the worst days of my life where I can barely utter a phrase, when I feel so worthless and ashamed that I can't even speak his name, I have to get something out. Yep. I have to vocalize it because if I want this thing to be established in unity between me and Yah, we need a minimum of two witnesses. And if I can't even witness for myself, it probably is not worth doing. Mm -hmm. I wonder how many people have thought of that, that you and Yahovah is, is the two witnesses. That's very interesting. A good thing to stand on. Okay, we'll end there. Uh, we'll come back next week. We got more to talk about. Yes, sir. Great stuff that you're doing. Thank you so much for doing it. Thank you for stepping up. And, Bless you, uh, brother. I, man, I just, you know, people need to know that this is going on. We can't just put our heads in the sand. It, it, it's happening. Thank God there's people doing something about it. And if, again, listen to what Yehovah is telling you to do, either support this or, or uh, start something themselves, whatever. Just obey, right? Amen. Okay, all right. Thank you for joining us on Shabbat Night Live. We will see you next week. Until then, Shavuot Tov. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, Torah fans. Give this video a thumbs up and share it with a friend. Tap the subscription button and the bell icon, and I promise to update weekly with in-depth biblical research. Be sure to download the new MichaelRood.tv app for both mobile and home devices for even more commercial-free content.